Hello everyone, it's Cleo here, and today we're going to be talking about this little dragon friend in the My Little Pony Make Your Mark special. Where did he come from? What's he all about? What could be his origin story? He raises actually a lot of questions for all of us who understood the G4 lore for dragons. Now because he had a very good and lengthy idea that we just had to share with you, my brother Lockie is going to be explaining his idea to you. Everyone who is a fan of G4 My Little Pony knows that dragons appeared here and there in the Friendship is Magic cartoon with a few episodes where a dragon or even several dragons are of importance to the plot. It's not really a surprise that there would be a dragon joining the core cast of G5 as a pretty obvious successor to Spike as well. But a few details and a few lines in the recent Make Your Mark special raise some very important questions. Sunny Star Scout, right here, says that dragons haven't been seen in Equestria in generations, plural. And it's unlikely that this is ignorance on her part, as I made the point in a previous theory, this one right here, that Maritime Bay has a lighthouse, which means ponies are seafaring and have interconnected travel and or trade, and therefore it's also likely that they have regular exchange of information regarding lots of different locations. And they also have phones and streaming for instant communication and transfer of information, so we can assume that whatever Sunny says about this is true. She does have a vested interest in other cultures and species in Equestria anyway. If anyone in the core cast would know, it would be her. So, taking the fact that dragons haven't been seen in Equestria as, indeed, absolute fact, how can that be? Where did they go? How did we get from entire large island populated with them pretty densely, with several living on the Equestria mainland as well, to absolutely none of them. The key to what happened to the dragons has to lie in the Dragonlands, as while dragons are seen in the main landmass of Equestria, we know it's unusual. In the seventh episode of the entire show, the main six question what a fully grown dragon is doing in Equestria, as its presence is very unusual. There's another dragon just kind of chilling out in the Everfree Forest in episode 24 of season 1, but across all of the show, appearances from dragons, dragons who aren't Spike at least, are very unusual. Now it would be easy to say that there was some kind of dragon civil war or dragon order 66 to quickly explain away where all of them went. That being said, I think dragons disappearing probably has more biological and or ecological reasons behind it, a decent number of dragons, especially older and larger ones, seem unbothered by politics in the Dragonlands. In Season 6, Episode 5, it seems that only lanky, adolescent-sized dragons, or at very least mainly lanky, adolescent-sized dragons, come to the Dragonlands when summoned for the Gauntlet of Fire, which is the contest to decide the next Dragonlord. Either then Dragon Lord Torch only called teenagers to become essentially the king of the dragons for the reason that actual adult dragons wouldn't care or some other reason, or any adult dragons just didn't care enough to show up. All that would indicate that a lot of the more mature and notably breeding age dragons wouldn't get caught up in any kind of war. They just don't care about what happens in the Dragonlands, they're not going to take sides and battle each other. In that case, my mind goes to some kind of loss of habitat or natural disaster. Now, dragons like Spike are shown swimming in actual lava. So a little bit of heat doesn't bother them. This is not a global warming thing that would kind of get rid of all of them. That being said, they seem at least as susceptible to cold as any other species in Equestria. Maybe more so, as there's the possibility that they're cold-blooded as a reptilian species. This could all tie into my previous theory on how G4 Equestria was reshaped into G5 Equestria by a mysterious Ice Age event coming down from the north. There's a direct channel from the sea north of Mount Everhoof to the Dragonlands, which could be an expeditious route to cool off the homeland. Thanks to good interspecies relations, maybe the number of dragons thinned out when they tried to help the other species in Equestria with relocation and warmth as well. They are strong, they can fly, and they can breathe fire, after all. They would be a great help with the pony plight, but I don't see how all of them would be making out of that kind of humanitarian effort. 
The one thing that seemingly isn't compatible is the time frame. My previous estimate was around 800 to 900 years from the end of G4 to the beginning of G5. That's long enough for the world of ponies to change a lot. But dragons seem to work on a very slow timetable. We know from Season 1 Episode 7 that a mature dragon might just take a nap or go into a sort of hibernation for 100 years. Not to mention dragons seem to have evolved as a species to some degree, something which takes a very long time if it's not got any kind of weirdness behind it. Let me explain. This is Spike. He's a baby dragon. He doesn't have wings. We know from the show that dragons are born without wings and then grow them later on in something called the Malt. The baby dragon from the Make Your Mark special already has wings when it hatches. That's a huge difference since Spike and several other baby dragons in Season 9 of French Piss Magic were all shown hatching without wings. It is observably a universal rule that wings grow later in the dragon life cycle. Another distinct difference is that in G4, dragons are only ever shown to hatch from their eggs when exposed to extreme heat or because they're hatched manually using magic, which also may have just been heat being applied magically. The dragon egg in Make Your Mark hatches just... just because. It's after magic is restored to a greater degree than ever before, but it's not after any concentrated exposure like with Spike's egg in G4. It just seems to be totally random. I, honestly, it seems completely random. All this says to me that it's been a very long time for such distinct characteristics about dragons to have changed as a species. As the dragon in Make Your Mark is just a newborn, we don't even know if dragons still have the ability to speak or if they have the intelligence of an animal in G5. Given Hitch's new Doctor Doolittle powers and his current association with animals, I get the feeling that this baby dragon might be more like a pet to the main cast. It seems difficult, though, to say that dragons have just evolved in a strange way over the course of thousands of years or more. The thing is, it was an unrealistic point in my original theory on how G4 turned into G5 that it had been several hundred years. After all, Twilight and her friends' exact appearances, mission, and personal relationships have been preserved down to basically every detail. And that's in a society so bad at record keeping that the existence of the train station and whole seemingly city underneath Zephyr Heights isn't common knowledge, even though it's clearly not that old. Given all this, I sense something a little bit less natural in the mix with all this. Here is my final theory, which fits within the timeline of my previous theory and relates back to it. The number of dragons was greatly thinned out by the Dragonlands being cooled down to an unlivable degree, thanks to currents coming down from the ocean beyond Mount Everhoof, as well as by many dragons' efforts in helping the rest of Equestria during the Ice Age Crisis. Dragons would have a slowly declining population from then on, experiencing a similar phenomenon as a lot of endangered species do. With each member of the race spread far and wide, it becomes less and less likely that they'll just happen to find each other to breed. Think of giant pandas without human intervention and conservation efforts. By the time of around 100 years before the beginning of G5, when the schism between the three pony races first begins, one pony decided that she would be the one who deserved to rule over all of Equestria, as the three stewards for the pony races had clearly failed. This pony was the purple alicorn seen in the end of the Make Your Mark special who also started a secret project. Using her powers as an alicorn, Rita Repulsa, <coughs> I mean the purple alicorn, over time, gathered the few remaining dragons and used dark alicorn magic to synthesize a new and artificial race of dragons from them. One that would mature faster, have the intelligence of an animal, and could be controlled and trained much like the flying dogs found in Zephyr Heights. These would, in theory, become Rita Repulsa's enforcers when she turned Equestria into her empire. However, something clearly went wrong. The dragons proved to be too difficult to train using Rita Repulsa's cruel and villainous methods. The project was abandoned so that less unruly pony soldiers and followers could be used instead, as we do see at least one pony in the villain's lair in Make Your Mark. However, some of the dragons were released or at very least survived being purged. At least one breeding pair made it out into the wild, 
resulting in the mysterious egg that washed up on the beach in Maritime Bay. What do you think? It all sounds a little bit like a crack fic, but a connection to the new villain would make sense. It seems unlikely that the good ponies of Equestria would interfere with dragons, or that dragons would naturally devolve into animals after having been a more intelligent species. While the theory is hard to prove, I don't think it'll be specifically disproven anytime soon either. G5 so far has been a little bit light on lore, so it's up to us to fill in the blanks. But please give us your theories on the new baby dragon and the new villain in the comments below. Where did the evil Alicorn come from? What will the baby dragon's name be? We know that the new Alicorn villain has at least one subordinate who is a pony, but she seemed kind of unsure of the whole situation when you watch the scene in the special. Put all your thoughts in the comments below. And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.